Let's talk about forgiving. Forgiving means to for and give, okay? It's about giving. When you forgive, it's not just about letting go or, you know, forgiving what the other person did to you. It's usually about yourself and taking your power back. So when you forgive someone, like, you know, have you heard that saying, I'll forgive but I won't forget? That's the worst type of forgiveness, okay? That's not forgiveness. It's, it's forgiving with an expectation that I'll forgive you. Yeah, I accept your apology, but I'll never forget what you did to me. So you hold that grudge inside of yourself. You hold the resentment. And what that does is it ends up poisoning you. It's like drinking poison and expecting the person who hurt you to die. That's what that saying of I forgive, but I won't forget means. You are holding onto a grudge. Forgiving means you let go and you realise that everyone acts upon their fear. Everyone has trauma, everyone has fears and everyone is limited by what they know and what they are aware of within themselves. So if a person hurt you, whether it's a parent, whether it's a co-worker, a friend, a partner, if they hurt you, realise that they are coming from a limited consciousness they are not aware that they have an issue. They are not aware of their trauma and they haven't taken responsibility for it. It's not a reflection of you. It doesn't mean that you're not worthy. It doesn't mean that you are deserving of that kind of abuse. It doesn't mean anything about you. It just means that that person has some issues that they need to deal with, but unfortunately they've reacted to it. And because they've reacted to their unhealed wounds, they have in turn hurt you. Because they are just reacting. And you are triggering them. In the sense that your aura, your energy, the way you carry yourself triggers them because within themselves they feel insecure. They don't feel good enough. They feel unlovable. That's not a reflection of you. So when you forgive someone, the highest level of forgiving is understanding that that person has their own issues and whatever they've done to you is a reflection of them and their internal world. What's important now is that you move on and you take responsibility for your life and you ask yourself, what do I need to learn? What boundaries do I need to put in place? What can I learn from this situation now so that, that I don't go into another situation like that? What were the red flags? What were the signs? What did I put up with for too, for too long that it escalated to that point? When you ask the right questions, you get the answers that you've been looking for. You get the validation, you get the approval, you get the love, you fill yourself up with love and you forgive yourself. Because at the end of the day, when you are in a toxic situation, for example, if you were with a toxic partner, you end up blaming yourself and telling yourself that, well, I, I could have done better. It's my fault. I should have, I could have, I would have. Right? All these things come, up, come along. That's not forgiving. You are still giving your power to that person. That person is still ruling your emotions. That person is still ruling, ruling your life when you keep thinking about, I should have done this. Or if only I could have made him change. If only I could have made him love me. If only I could have fixed him, maybe then we'll still be together. This fantasy that you have in your head that somehow you are the catalyst to that person changing when you're not. You're not the catalyst to anything. You do not, co you do not cause change in anyone. It's everyone's responsibility to be aware of who they are. You can trigger people. You can, you can make people realize that there's something wrong with them by obviously setting boundaries and telling them, listen, I won't accept this. I can't accept this. I refuse to accept this. If you're not going to respect me, then I'll come to you when you do respect me. Or we'll carry this conversation on when, you, when there's some respect, when you've calmed down. But what happens is that when we are in a toxic relationship or we've left a toxic relationship, the first thing we think is that I couldn't change him, so there's something wrong with me. I'm not worthy. That's what happens, right? Like, if the person couldn't love you and see you for who you were, despite all your best efforts, Despite the fact that you showed them kindness, you showed them love, you were so loving towards them, you gave them everything and they didn't give you anything in return, you were hoping one day that they will see you for your worth and they will love you. That day never came, right? And now you're sat here thinking, 
What did I do wrong? Why didn't he accept me for who I was? Why couldn't he love me? I did this for him. I did that for him. I, I gave him money. I spent on him. I gave him children. I was the best wife. I cooked for him. And you think about all the things that you did. But you did that from a place of emptiness. You did that from a place of the lack of validation. You did that from a place from a lack of self-love. You put someone else's needs before yourself. That's not that person's fault. That's your responsibility to express. You have a responsibility to express to everyone around you what your boundaries are, what you will accept and what you won't accept. That is an act of self-love. Self-love is saying to you, is saying to people around you, listen, this is how I operate. This is what I will accept. I don't accept anything else. Self-love is saying no to things that are against your morals. Self-love is saying no to things that are against what you believe in. Self-love is saying no to things that don't um, benefit you. That's self-love. Saying no as a full sentence without explaining yourself. So when you forgive, just know that part of forgiving is to forgive the person and let go. And, is to, and give yourself the love that you are craving from that person. Give yourself the love. Fill yourself up with that love. Fill yourself up with the validation that you were craving from that person. Let's say it was a friend. She didn't recognise your talent. She didn't recognise your how amazing you are. She didn't recognise that you were a good friend. And you felt used. You felt like she took advantage of you. You felt like she took advantage of your niceness. She treated you like a doormat. She, she kept using you, kept calling you up, to, asking you to take her for a ride because she ain't got a car. You spent money on her every time you went to a restaurant. You paid for her. You know, you took her in when she was alone. And in the end, she turned her back on you. Now you feel used. Again, that person is acting from their own trauma. That person is acting from their own limitations. It's not a reflection of you, but you are responsible for not putting boundaries. You are responsible for not telling her how you felt the first time you felt resentment. That's your responsibility. You are responsible for expressing your feelings. You are responsible for letting people know that they've crossed the line. And that's an act of self-love. When people cross the line, you don't brush it under the carpet. You let them know that, listen, you've crossed the line here. You've hurt my feelings. I feel used. I feel taken advantage of. And I won't be doing it again. Putting those boundaries in place saves you a lifetime of heartache. I promise you it does. Putting those boundaries in place and letting people know that this is as far as it will go before I walk away. That's self-love. And that's forgiving. Because when you, are, when you let people know how you operate and you let people know your boundaries, when that, if that time ever comes where your boundaries are crossed over and over again, and not even over and over again in the sense that you keep forgiving and letting go and going back to the same situation. No, you forget. Like let's say you're in a situation right now, you're in a marriage and you have arguments and you know things get, things get said and you know, there's heated arguments. And you forgive and you let go. And the same thing happens. The problem is this. You haven't communicated what was wrong. You haven't communicated or expressed how you felt after the argument. And that's why the same thing keeps happening. So forgiving and letting go in that situation is also communicating how you feel. And I feel like a lot of people don't communicate how they feel because they are afraid of how the person will react. Like you're afraid of losing people. But at the end of the day, if people don't respect your boundaries... Why would you want to be with that person? Why would you want to be around people like that? That don't respect your boundaries. That, that don't care about how you're feeling and how their actions are affecting you. You need to, like, that's not being selfish. That's being loving. Because remember this, guys. If you don't teach people how to treat you, you are allowing them to continue with their bad behavior. And that's not good because people need to be held accountable. You need to hold people accountable for their behaviour. And that's another act of self-love. And it's another act of forgiving. Because remember, forgiving, when you split in half, four, and giving. You are teaching people, you are giving people tools to use so that they can be better people. Now, if you don't tell people how they are acting, how it's affecting you, then you are, you are, make, you are allowing them to stay that way. You are not holding them accountable. And that's so important in a relationship, in any kind.